Hey, it's me, Pro Jared. Welcome back to Deathgate. Uh, a lot of stuff happened in the last episode. Mostly the dragon, you know, stealing my ship and ruining everything. Uh, okay. Current plan is, uh, I learned this... I learned this nullify water spell. So if someone drinks it, it just nullifies their magic. So I guess I'll just do that. The spell surrounds the bottle of water. After a few seconds, it's done its work. Although the water looks the same, you know that it's some magic nullifying effects that you experienced earlier. Cool. So now I've got this... bottle of... nullify water. Do I... I'm gonna put this back on. It makes me feel better. There we go. It makes me feel better. So I wonder if, um... Take the rug? <laughs> I'm taking this. The carpet depicts a beautiful scene. A single tree stands in a lush field. Wait, can I put that back down? I have an idea. So, we need to get this globe into the ship. Oh, okay. No, no. Oh, it's all coming together. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so this is, uh, this is another ship. Not mine, it's theirs. Sama's ship. Okay, so it's got the wheel, but it needs the stone to get us back. I've got it. Oh my god, I'm so fucking smart. Alright, check this out. So, this is too heavy to lift, right? But we could probably roll it. Ah, but if we roll it, it'll never make it there. What if I were to say, I don't know, create a reality pocket onto this rug? You trace the familiar spell into the air. When it takes effect, it's as if the picture in the carpet just comes into focus, taking on a new dimension. The scene, a single tree in a lush clearing, is real. And then I roll this into the carpet, roll up the carpet, and then take it back with me to the ship. But also, I want to see what's inside of here. You step onto the rug as if you're going to walk over it, but end up falling into the scene. Your orientation changes. Suddenly, the direction you were walking becomes up. Your balance goes for a holiday, and you tumble onto the lush grass of the clearing. I just want to see if there's anything in here that I can use before I do all that. You inhabit the scene woven into the rug. A lone tree stands in a lush field. In front of you, you see the portal. Okay. Look at the trees. Aside from the one tree, the lone tree in the center of the clearing, the other trees act as a circular wall, keeping you inside. They are beautiful, but a little frustrating. Climb the tree. You climb up the nearest tree and look out over an impenetrable forest. It extends as far as you can see. Evidently, the artist who created this carpet didn't think much beyond the immediate scene. Um, I guess this is it. Alright, that's fine. Alright. Just wanted to see if there was anything useful in there. Doesn't seem to be, so... Original plan. Wow. Push it, baby! You get behind the globe and push it against it with all of your might. The stone sphere creaks, then rolls off its stand, bounces down the steps, and ends up on the carpet. Only it doesn't stop there. Since the carpet is now a portal into the other where, the globe falls into it. You see it continue to roll until it hits the tree in the scene. Boop! And yoink! Alright. Hell yeah. Oh. Okay. And now... To get it out, I just... Oh, that's actually a nice decoration. Alright. Will he, uh... Roll out on its own, or I have to get in there and push? Oops. Now, oh, push. Again, you gather your strength and heave the boulder-like globe towards the portal. It rolls without much problem. In fact, as soon as the globe is partway through it, gravity on the far side grabs the sphere from your hands. The globe disappears. I'm cr fucking crushing it, dude. Hell yeah! You step through the portal, back onto your ship. As soon as you leave, the carpet reverts back to its original state. You stand in the cramped bridge of Sama's ship. It has the navigational wheel and the globe where the steering stone should be. Okay, so now all I gotta do is transfer all these runes onto this bad boy. And now I can go back and go after the dragon. That seems bad. I still can't go in there, can I? 
Oh, an unnamed terror forces me back. Hold on. I'm going to save the game here. This is important. Uh... Oh no, Dargan! So this has the nullify magic, but it only lasts for a certain while. If I drink this... <laughs> immediately you sense the effects. Your magic power drains away, making you feel as helpless as a newborn. But this also means that foreign magic cannot affect you. Now can I enter this? Oh. There's no doubt that Sangdrax calls this cave home. Blood streaks the walls, and the floor is littered with the remains of previous meals. Look at the bones. These must be the bones of the poor fools who chanced upon Sangdrax. The remains are of all races. It appears that the dragon doesn't discriminate. We've got some stalactites and stalagmites. Take the scales? You take the scales! Hell yeah. The scales are both sharp and oily. You get the feeling that if you cut yourself on one of them, the wound would become severely infected, perhaps prove fatal. You also sense that the scales of the dragon hold the same chaotic magic that Sangdrax commands. Neat. I don't know if I can really do anything with that. Um. Alright, got his scales. Guess I'll leave. Whoops. You stare at the dragon scales in your hands. Their magic suddenly becomes active. Fear drives through your brain like red-hot nails. With the source of the fear magic so close, it's more than your sanity can withstand. You spend the rest of your life gibbering unintelligibly and not playing adventure games well. And not playing adventure games, what hell? <laughs> the scales are so evil that when the nullified magic ran out, um, I went mad. Glad I saved it. Okay, so don't take the scales, I guess? I guess I don't need anything out of there? I, I... It seemed like a smart thing to do. Alright, um... I need to find my rock. Oh. Oh, now that Sangdrax has left, the stone is no longer reacting to its magic by glowing. Oh, no, 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 that's how I find the, that's how I find the rock. <laughs> Drink this, get in that cave, grab the scales, go back out, drop the scales. Uh, in the piles of rock? Ah, ah! You spread the dragon scales over the pile of rocks. As you hoped, Zifnab's rock reacts to the magic in the scales by glowing. Now the rock is very visible and easily distinguishable from the other stones in the pile. Give me that one. Got him! You take the glowing stone from the pile of rocks. Should I... Put the scales back? Oh no, they're stuck there now. Okay, cool. I just wanted to go back here and see if there's anything there. I can cast spells again. Um, hey, I did it. Hello again, patron. Uh, no. Nope. I don't have very. Never mind. Okay. So now that I have the stone again, I can use that against Sangdrax. I th am I? Do I go now? Am I done here? I'm scared. Use. Return to the Nexus, I guess. Is everything normal? The gate is very open. Uh oh. Zar? Zar? I'm gonna read your book! What the hell's in this now? There's probably a lot of really important lore in here, so get ready for some story time. Oh, it's the history of the Sundering. Okay. The Vortex. Eons ago, the Vortex was discovered. It was a place outside reality as we know it. In fact, it appeared to be a reality unto itself. It was a place of great power. Researchers theorized that it might be the actual source of magic. 
It remains a place of mystery, as much as is known about it, much more escapes us. It was the perfect place to actualize the plan. In order to defeat the enemy and create the new world that Sama visualized, we had to sunder the world into five realms, air, fire, stone, water, and the labyrinth, four to give to the mensch, and one to imprison the patrons. Not only would we have removed the from would we be removed from the earth while this happened, we would be able to draw upon the perfect magic of the vortex to make it happen. We needed an instrument to focus the magic of the vortex, so we created an island of stone that floated over its very heart. Upon it, we inscribed a rune structure unlike any other. Indeed, this was a spell, but not just a spell. It was many spells intertwined into one structure. Every spell had a starting rune. When a wizard traces a spell, the magic flows from the starting rune into the other runes. Upon completion, the spell is defined and it is cast. This rune structure is different. It combines many different possible starting runes. When magic is introduced upon one of these runes, the spell is defined and cast. There's a compelling reason for this. Along with being used to sunder the world, the island was designed to serve additional functions. Shortly after the Sundering, the same rune structure created a conduit between the worlds. It, currently, it is currently used to transport people and cargo from realm to realm. Using the Death Gate, we were able to populate the realms with the mensch we had selected. All that was required was a fleet of ships outfitted with steering stones containing the naming rune of the target realms. The Death Gate had a grander purpose though. When the mensch had settled, we reawaken, and the rune structure will be used again to interconnect the worlds. Power and materials will freely flow from realm to realm, depending on need. After this interconnection, various spells can regulate and modify the system. We have included all of these in the rune structure. We have also included a failsafe spell. Should something go drastically wrong with the sundering, the spell exists to reform the single world from the five realms. We don't anticipate actually using this spell, but it exists just in case. The Island The activation of a spell from the island's rune structure is relatively simple, but the execution of the spell must be exact. The spell has been keyed to work only in the presence of the world seal, or in the current case, all five of the seal pieces. The island is home to the four spires which encircle the rune structure, one to represent each of the elements. To awaken the island's magic, each seal piece must be placed upon its respective column. The procedure has an interesting side effect. Whenever a seal piece is placed upon its own counterpart column, it generates an elemental storm. Everything on the island will be bathed in that element. Tornado force winds, a firestorm, an avalanche of rock, or a deluge of water. We couldn't comfortably cast our spells while being attacked by the elements, so we placed the rune structure inside a warded circle. Everything inside the circle is completely safe. While safely ensconced within the ward, even the storming elements become no more than a spectacle to observe. When all four of the pieces have been placed, the island is primed. It is ready to cast whatever spell the operator wishes. The choice is made using the focus, which resembles a floating hexagonal frame. It must be placed over the desired starting rune, after which the remaining seal piece, that of the Nexus, is set inside of the focus. This will ignite and cast the selected spell. The spells, six men were dedicated to creating and intermingling the spells carried by the island. They are Sama, Dimitri, Orsef, Lornoy, Tylor, and Weyleth. Those are the devils? It sure was. Remember Sama? We met Sama. But they call, he was known as Devil of the Soul. He just kind of seemed like a chill bro to me. Indisputably, six of the greatest contemporary Sartan magicians. Each was tasked with producing a single spell, and we will discuss each individually. Oh. Zar, you ruined the book. Naturally, Sama directed the... the his sorting, starting rune is... Uh, has, uh, Dimitri is up there. Dimitri's interest ran... Have quite as his colleagues, this obvious. Orsef? Orsef was involved in much of the mechanics of the plan. He is the closest advisor to Sam. Lorna, despite obvious tensions, has been. Do I need to know all this? Hold on. I'm gonna draw their runes for themselves. 
That might be helpful for them. So, like, if that's the Sama rune, it's like a circle guy, and it goes off like that. Just being a quick note, boy, don't worry about it. Dimitri is like a half a ribbon going off to the left. Uh, oh, Orsip is easy. He's just a fish hook. No problem. Like a, or check mark. Oh, so Lorna. Shit. Looks exactly like Sama or Dimitri. No, I guess it's because his thing goes down? Distinct. That's a distinction. Uh, hopefully I drew that well enough to not confuse future Jared. Tyler. Got it. Go easy. And Waylith. Just a little wavy boy. Alright. Got it. It's probably going to be important for later. Um... Am I just going into the... I guess I'm just going into the death gate. It's new save game. Death gate. Hey, that's the name of the game. Death gate. Heh. <laughs> Um, we're going in, I guess. Stone spires tower above a field of writhing vines. You see a dark, twisted forest across the field. Uh huh. Choke vines? You recall when you escaped the labyrinth. The choke vines weren't much of a problem then. It was winter and the season drove the vines into a type of hibernation. They couldn't move in the cold. Now that the weather is warmer, they thrive and force you to deal with them in order to cross. So, like... Cast cold on them? The cold spell floats over the sea of twisting vines. It expands and drops over the field like a blanket. As it does, you see frost form. The vines begin to move more and more slowly until they are torpid, completely still. Hey, I actually got to use the cold spell for something. I did it. Uh, how am I doing on points, by the way? Um, 1,100 out of 1,500 points. We're getting towards the end. All right. Spires. Look at the spires. Countless stone spires project from the field of vines. They, the line of them extends east and west as far as you can see. Too many, too many of them are last the remains of previous victims of the field. Periodically, lightning strikes each spire in turn, starting to the east and moving steadily westward until the bolts are out of sight. Do I want to do anything with these, or just... The remains of previous explorers of the Field of Vines are wrapped tightly around the spires. The bodies are both man and animal shaped. I guess I just moved past them? Oop. Back over the Field of Choke Vines you've recently crossed, you see the last gate of the labyrinth. Once a very welcome sight. Did I go the wrong way? No, okay. You stumble out of the brush only to come face to face with three wounded tiger creatures. Unfortunately, what you know of the labyrinth tells you that the only thing more dangerous than a tiger creature is a wounded one. They stare at you surprised, then let out a growl and tends to leap. You don't have time much to do but run! Oh no, they're hot. Um... I don't want to go in the burial cave. I'm going to go this way. A tig the tiger creatures fall on you in a fury of teeth and claws. At that moment, everything in the world is sharp and covered with blood. You discover that without an effective plan, a lone patron simply cannot defeat them. Dad, I got an idea. Chase me. They're close on your tail. Chase me. The tiger creatures hesitate when they come to the field, but after observing your safe crossing, they charge in after you. When you pause and look back, they've already about halfway cross. Now that they see you, they start sprinting. Yes, sure would be a shame if suddenly the vines heated up and came to life. The frost disappears as the heat spell takes hold. At first, the plants move sluggishly, but as the torpidity subsides, they resume the normal activity. 
The tiger creatures are caught in the middle of the field when the vines reawaken. The plants wrap around their struggling prey and drag them off to, into separate spires. With wide, wild eyes, the tiger creatures watch lightning strike a spire only a few hundred yards to the west, then strikes to the next closest spire, and proceeds to work its way down the line. Soon the lightning blasts the two closest spires. The stench of cooking tiger meat reaches you even here. Oh! I just... I just wanted them to be grabbed by the vines and subdued. Sorry, I didn't know if they're gonna get lightning rotted to death. Whoops. <laughs> oh, this is fine. Got him. It's fine. Got him. And now I have tiger meat to eat. Boop. Um, uh, no tiger remain. Take stuff to take. All right. Go back through. All right. We've got a well-used campsite. The fire pit looks well-used. There's some rocks. I could sit on the rock. That feels nice. It'd be much more comfortable when your butt is covered with fur. Take the skull. You take one of the skulls off the pole. Take the other skull. It's definitely the skull of a tiger man. Those beasts are frightening enough to confront face to face, but having to stare at one of their skulls is a distinctly unpleasant experience. The skull has sharp fangs, but a small brain pan, which isn't all that surprising. Hello? Oh. This is the tiger creature's burial cave. Paintings on the wall depict their gods, and bones are strewn on the floor. Take a bone? Okay, and our bones. Look at the bones. Half-buried bones stick up from the ground. These are obviously the remains of the tiger men. It appears that they are just sophisticated enough to bury their dead. It must have been a tough decision for them. Respect their fallen comrades or lunchtime. Look at the cave painting. The crude cave painting depicts a dark god of the tiger creatures. Presumably, death, chasing after its tiny feline followers and shooting bolts of lightning. It is clothed in a black robe which only shows a skull-like head. It's an interesting insight into the Tiger Man religion. Really? A black robe and a tiger skull? Talk to the tiger skull. Alas, poor tiger. I knew you not. But then again, if I did, I probably would have wanted to kill you too. Alright, and with that, we'll end the episode here. <laughs> uh, damn, this is it. We are actually in the Death Gate. Uh, well, that's damn exciting. And, uh, so I'm pretty sure at some point I'm gonna need to wear the robe and the skull as a mask to protect, to trick the tiger people into thinking I am death. Which kind of rules. <laughs> that's a fun concept. Alright. So, we'll leave this episode off here. As always, thank you guys so very much for watching. See you next time.